Hey, welcome back to the Pre-Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we talk about how to have an awesome foundation for your marriage. Yeah, and today's episode is the one you've been waiting for. It is. It's sexy time. <laughs> So we're going to talk all about... I said, I've never heard you say it like that. I think I, I sounded like Borat or something. I don't know what was happening there. I don't know what happened there. But I get excited when we're talking about sex and marriage. And and that's what today's episode is all about. Again, this whole podcast we're doing, it's not only meant to give you a foundation for your marriage, but it's really also meant to point you to a, an even more comprehensive resource to build right. that foundation for marriage. And that is our Preparing for I Do video course. You can find out all the information about that and how to take part in it at premarriage.com. Let's dive into today's episode. Well, this is probably the most fun episode of the <laughs> pre-marriage podcast. It's all about sex. I'm excited. Um, <laughs> and yeah, this is an important topic. I mean, this is an important topic. It is nuanced. It is, uh, it's complex because Every person enters into marriage with a certain level of sexual baggage. Even if you are a virgin, you have some sexual baggage just from things you've been exposed to, things you've seen, mindsets that you've taken on from how you were taught about sex, insecurities that you might have. Uh, the, co the combination of all of those things and then combined with, if you have them, um, past sexual experiences can create just a lot of, a lot of complexity around this issue. And it's something that needs to be talked about. Like yes. we've got to be able to have open, honest conversations, uh, exploring you know our sexual past, our sexual expectations, because sex is intended to be a vitally important part of marriage uh, through all seasons of marriage. It's something created by God and meant to be enjoyed exclusively within the covenant of marriage between a husband and wife. And so many married couples, they're not. They're not experiencing that gift to the fullest, and I believe one of the biggest reasons why is they're not having healthy conversations about it. Absolutely, and I think it begins with talking about your expectations, because I do think that, like Dave said, even if you're a virgin, you've waited all this time, which is just awesome, that you've chosen to wait, and, and, and just, you know, we know that's a hard thing to do, but you kind of expect that because you've waited that it's just gonna magically be amazing right out of the gate on your honeymoon, but that really is very rarely the case. And when we have that kind of expectation, it can lead us to having some other issues that are not often discussed. And so we were actually talking to a couple about this the other day where they both waited to have sex before they were married and they get to their wedding night and the, the wife in particular, she said, I was, I was so like nervous but excited and he was so nervous and excited and they get down to it and she kind of had so much anxiety when it came to having sex that I don't even know if they actually had sex on their wedding night because yeah. I think they tried and it hurt. I mean, nobody ever talks about how much it hurts the first time, especially for, you know for the woman in particular. And um, it actually led them down this road where she actually had an actual condition called vaginismus that doesn't get talked about enough, but it has to do, it's a mental and physical reaction to having anxiety when it comes to sex to the point that your body seizes up and, and, and is not able to experience pleasure when it comes to sex. And so she had to go talk to her doctor about this, talk to a counselor about this. And the reason I'm bringing this up, and it may be you're like, wow, right out of the gate, Ashley, thank you for talking about this. But I wanna talk about it because it's a real issue. And I think that, especially in the church, we don't talk about these things because we, we just want, we wanna encourage young people, you know, to wait, and unmarried people to wait before marriage, but we don't tell them why. And we also don't tell them the flip side of how beautiful sex is, but that it also takes time and patience and even work, so to speak, as far as finding out what is pleasurable to you as a couple and, uh, and, and not having any shame attached to that. And so you definitely wanna talk about your expectations. And with that, it's gonna, you're gonna have to talk about your past. You know, Some of you um, have probably had sexual experiences in your past and you need to be honest with your future spouse about that and talk about that. Talk about different expectations that you have as far as what you're hoping sex will, will look like as far as frequency uh, and things like that. And it can be awkward in this dating and engaged phase, but it is something, especially for the engaged couples, you've gotta talk about it. It can't be something that is off the table in conversation. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of you that are watching, you're, you're having sex with each other and you have been for a long time. And um, I don't wanna shame you in that in any yeah. way, but you're thinking, oh, we've got this, we've got great sexual chemistry, but I wanna challenge you to, to pause that and to say, listen, we wanna enter into marriage, you know, honoring God's plan for, for marriage and for sex, and yet we, 
we know it's going to be difficult because we, we've already experienced that. I was talking to a friend of mine um, who I've, I've been just kind of mentoring a little bit, a guy who's younger and he's in a relationship and they've been sexually active, but he's like, but we're committed to each other. And so it's okay because we're committed and and you know we've been sexually active before, and she was married before, and and I don't I don't know if we can be around each other and and not give into that temptation. But we love each other and we're committed to each other, so it's okay. And I said, well, listen, I know that you love each other. I know you're committed to each other. I said, but to to make your own rules for something that God has so clearly outlined His yes. rules for is really to kind of re- take yourself out from underneath, you know, God's blessing and protection because you're you're trying to rewrite rules to to meet your current desires instead of saying, I love this person enough and I trust God enough to, to do things his way. You know, I'm, I'm getting ready to marry this Saturday a couple from our church. They're both in their 60s, um, both been married before, both, you know, they lost their spouses, lost their, lost their spouses yeah. um, to, you know, to, the, who passed away years ago. And, and then this couple found each other and they're like a couple teenagers in love. And they're, they're saying that the hardest part in our relationship is like, we we really want to have sex, but we know that God's word says, you know, sex is for marriage and that we need to wait until we've entered into that covenant and saying we're committed to each other is not enough, but actually entering into marriage is what we need to do. And it was such an issue for them. Even, in, I mean, you never outgrow that temptation. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're, they're in love. They, they really, they want to consummate the relationship. You know, they've mm-hmm. got a lot of drive and desire. And so their solution was, we know we want to be together um, we know that we're committed to each other. We know we want to do it God's way. And so instead of just dating endlessly or having this crazy long engagement, um, let's just get married sooner. And so they moved up the date and they're they're getting married on Saturday. And so, yeah. you know, and I'm honored to be doing their wedding cer- ceremony. I think sometimes, you know, couples will drag out dating and they'll drag out engagement for these never ending periods because they have these, you know, I don't know why, unrealistic goals of having this this elaborate wedding that takes years to plan, or they think they've got to be with someone for years and years to know if they're really ready to marry them. You're never going to know everything about a person. You could date them for 50 years, you wouldn't know everything about them. There has to be an element of just faith and commitment to say, I'm, I'm going to commit my life to you, and I'm going to trust that God has brought us together, and that he's going to bless the covenant we enter into, um, but let's do it his way. And if you're having sex right now, as most couples are when they're dating and engaged, uh, I would encourage you to say, no, we wanna do this God's way. And it might make us look a little weird in terms of the culture, but what the culture considers normal isn't anything that you want for your marriage. Because normal in marriage in our culture is two people who are disconnected from each other, who just kind of live and survive as roommates and live separate lives for the most part. God's plan for your marriage is for it to thrive, for it to be amazing, passionate, intimate, connected, and so just say, let's, let's do it his way. And again, it's not to shame those of you who are, who are already sexually active, but to challenge you yeah. as someone who wants the best for you. That's our only agenda here is to point you to God's truth because his agenda for your life is for you to have the best marriage and the best life possible. And if we try to do it our own way and we disregard his clear plans, then we're setting ourselves up for both current and future pain. Absolutely, that was so well said, sweetie. And and we certainly aren't shaming anyone. You know, we know everybody watching this is coming from a different background. And for some of you watching this, maybe you've never heard that God in the in the Bible encourages people to wait until marriage. Like that could be a whole new concept. But I'm telling you, I have known couples where they have been sexually active and then they've recommitted to to abstain from sex until the wedding day, until the wedding night. And and they're so glad they did it. I mean, every time they're like, I'm so glad it made the, the honeymoon that much better. And it really kind of cleared our, our minds and our hearts and helped us to focus on other things and uh, really got us you know, more prepared for marriage in the process. And so we encourage you to do that if that is something that you're currently doing. And it's possible too. We know it can be hard, but it's possible. You know, so many engaged couples spend so much time and money on preparing for their wedding, but they often forget that they need to prepare for their marriage. Well, we have got a great new resource for you, and it's called Preparing for I Do. That's right. This video course is going to have so much information to help spark meaningful conversations for your future marriage and to help you set a solid foundation for your life together. The videos aren't all that are part of the course. There's also a powerful assessment tool designed by Jimmy Evans, which is gonna lead you through some of the most important conversations you've ever had as a couple. To access all this and much more, check out the site, premarriage.com. 
I want to talk about something else and shift the conversation just a little bit. I think so much of how we see sex has to do with how we were raised and, and how our parents talked about sex or did not talk about sex, you know, what our churches had to say about sex or did not say about sex. And I know in our own marriage, this was definitely something where we were challenged because we grew up very differently. Uh, and, and like in my home, my parents rarely, if ever, talked about it. And when I came home as a middle schooler and like had a question about something I heard at school, my mom, I remember specifically, she was so freaked out by what I asked her. It was like about some sexual act or something that I had heard these words. And I was like, what is that? And you know, like many parents do, it kind of freaked her out because she's like, oh no, we're in this phase of parenting now. I don't know what to say. And so she just kind of shut it down and was like, that's dirty. Anyone who does that is dirty. And like that, I just never want to hear that again, essentially. And, and so I just, I didn't ask about it again. I didn't ask about anything having to do with sex again. And honestly, I just kind of saw it as this thing we don't speak of, we don't think of, that it's bad. Now, Dave, on the other hand, totally opposite experience. Yeah, no, my parents, they're, they're a couple of freaks. They are all over each other. It's uh, 50 shades of middle age, I tell them. It is. Um, and they, they, uh, they're very affectionate. And so um, when I would see them together, I, would, I, I was grossed out by the fact they were so affectionate. But it also, in, in a lot of ways, never made sex or affection or marital intimacy uh, feel like something that was you know, dirty or anything that we should be ashamed of. It's something to be celebrated and something that, that I looked forward to when I found that woman that I was gonna marry. Um, so, you know, I came into the, into the relationship just, I was, I was just pumped. Like, it was, it was countdown to sex. I mean, <laughs> I was like so, so excited. And I think Ashley was apprehensive because, again, she had come from this setting that, like, I, I don't know what to, I, I don't, we never even really talked about this openly. And so, yeah. those different expectations uh, brought on by our different upbringings around this one specific subject, kind of contributed to you know our own forms of, of baggage. Like mm-hmm. she had baggage in that sex was seen as like something that was bad and dirty. And even though she knew that she wanted to do it and that it was an important part of marriage, she had to get past those mindsets. You know, I had baggage not so much from how I was raised, but from things I'd fallen into, like pornography, uh, which is its own huge separate set of baggage because porn warps our mind to look at sex as just a just an animalistic act, and it looks at another person just as an object for your gratification, not a soul to be cherished, but a body to be used. And, and I had polluted my mind through my teenage years um, and even into early adulthood with, with porn, knowing it was wrong, knowing that, that Jesus said to look at a woman with lust is to commit adultery with your heart, in your heart. Um, I knew it was wrong, but I just, I, I, I felt trapped and trapped by it. Um, and we got together, I'd stayed away from it for a while. You know, I made the mistake of not being fully honest, not fully disclosing that this had been a past struggle in an area where I needed accountability. I didn't want her to think of me differently as someone who had had a problem with this. And in that area of secrecy, of me not confessing that, I ended up falling back into it and then feeling even more ashamed and more trapped. And then when that did finally come out, it, it created a, a whole new set of baggage that I'd created in our, in our marriage and specifically in our sex life because um, you know, now I'd virtually brought all these other people into the sacred covenant, you know, of our marriage, and it created distrust in, in her for me and insecurity in her of thinking, well, am I not enough for some reason? And it had sabotaged my own thinking around sex. And it's something that we really had to work through. We yeah. we talk a lot more about that issue specifically in the preparing for I do video course, um, which you can get at premarriage.com and also in our book, which is called The Naked Marriage. Um, so not to, to just dive deep on this episode and turn it into that, but the pornography issue uh, is something that you guys need to talk about because our, our, yes. our culture, our society has normalized it just as a harmless form of entertainment, but it has desensitized us and sabotaged our thinking about sex like very few things have. And so you need to talk about it when you're talking about sexual expectations and past sexual baggage to talk about porn and how much of those expectations we have in sex isn't rooted in reality, but it's rooted in these false toxic fantasies from porn, and how much of our, our baggage is also rooted in, in, in these pornographic images that we've allowed to take root into our minds. And yeah. we need to be able to talk about that and make sure your relationship is, is open and honest in terms of being able to have those conversations. Yes, because when it comes to good sex, it's not just about attraction. 
it's about connection, it's about vulnerability, and that's actually what we do talk about in our Naked Marriage book right here. This is something you can read before you're married or after you're married. And but if, it, if, you're, if you're listening to this only, if you're not watching this on YouTube, she just held up a copy of our I did. Naked Marriage book, which is also an audio book, by the it way. It is an you audio book. You can get book. on Amazon, you can listen like you're listening now. That's right, and it, you know, we take a deeper dive into our own story with this, but I do think it's just so important that you realize that if you're holding any secret, maybe it's not even a pornography secret, but any secret is actually going to keep you from having the amazing sex life that God actually wants you to have. I think for some reason, some of us, you know, in our upbringings, we have this notion that sex belongs to Satan or it's like of the world and it's like the, the thing that we do, but we, you know, heaven forbid, we enjoy it. But that could not be further from the truth. It is actually God's idea just for marriage. And that is awesome. Like he didn't just want two people to come together. He said, I'm gonna give them like the greatest gift ever. And it's not only gonna be pleasurable, but it can also produce children, which is just amazing. And so it's this awesome gift. And so we have to, you know, if you were like me and you were raised in a home where my parents are awesome and so loving and have been married for many, many years, but I think that there was this inadequacy they felt in talking about sex and so that's why they shut it down. And I think many of us go through that. So if you came from a background like mine, Maybe you, maybe you right now, you're watching this and you're like, I can't believe I'm watching this because it makes me feel like I'm getting a rash all over my face because I'm so uncomfortable and I'm burning up hot because this issue just makes me feel just like I don't wanna talk about it. Like I, I wanna kinda cover my ears. So if you're like that, I'm so glad you're watching this and you're staying with us because you really, right now, before you get married, need to really ask the Lord to help you renew your mind and see sex as a gift for marriage. And I kind of wish I had done that before we got married. I didn't realize how the, all the hangups I had when it came to sex. And it kind of came out, you know, after our honeymoon, when I, when I did, I just, I had all this mixture of feelings and I thought that, you know, I would get married and then we go to our honeymoon night and I would miraculously flip a switch in my mind and be a sex goddess. And that didn't happen, you know? I mean, we had a great honeymoon night, but I had, I wasn't just, like feeling like, oh, I got this and this is just awesome. And it really kind of was a, it gave me, I felt very disillusioned by it because I thought, Lord, I've waited for marriage and now I just don't feel like I'm great at it all of a sudden and have all the right feelings. I felt very confused. And I think that's like a lot of people, but we don't talk about it. So I just wanna help you all. If you're coming from that background, man or woman, really kind of start praying now for God to bless your sex life with your spouse. And that may seem like a very weird and foreign concept, but it shouldn't be because he's our father. He created us and he created sex and he created it for the covenant of marriage. So start praying now that it's gonna be something good and pleasing and that you're going to be patient with each other, that you're gonna serve each other in this beautiful way through sex and that you won't allow it to be something that brings shame into your lives. Because the marriage bedroom, the marriage bed, so to speak, needs to be the safest place on earth where you both feel loved and accepted and not judged, there's no shame. And, and things like pornography take away from that, things like secrets take away from that. And so right now is the time to talk about these things with your fiance. Man, that's so good. And guys, we give you the tools to help guide you through those conversations in the Preparing for I Do course. The assessment tool that's part of that and, and the video we do specifically on sex as well is, is meant to guide you with what questions to ask, how to have those conversations in a meaningful way. Yes. It's gonna prepare you both to, to have the right expectations, the right partnership, the right connection, the right level of, of honesty and intimacy around this aspect of your marriage and looking forward um, so that you can have the best sex life possible. Because like Ashley said, that's part of God's plan for your marriage. He wants your sex life to rock. And so check out that course at premarriage.com to learn how to take that conversation to the next level. Thanks for being part of today's episode. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.